Welcome back to Investing in Trading Live, sponsored by Online Trade, Trading Academy. As always, my name is Josh Lilquist. On the last segment, we're talking about the income strategies, more on the, the, the leverage side of things, being able to be efficient with your capital, whether you got 500 bucks or 5,000 or 5 million, how to use the asset to have the most efficiency with that so your dollars go further. That's the futures market. Forex market, options market, and we have investing classes here locally at the Academy to introduce you to these techniques, these strategies for everyday people to make smart investing decisions. If you miss seats for that investing class, just simply text the word investing right now to the number 210-210. That's text investing to the number 210-210 for two seats for that class locally here. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen to podcasts, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and Spotify if you do miss Part of the show. We do segments almost every single day. We do four on one day and then typically at least one per day throughout the week on the markets, give market updates, and trying to help our listeners make smart investing decisions and do that with confidence. So, Al, in that last segment, with that, the, with the income strategy we're talking about, you can still use those same assets in your wealth strategy, which would be your 401k, your IRAs, and your retirement accounts. And a lot of people are looking at the options market to do that because options does a few things. One, gives you capital efficiency. So think about mm-hmm. it this way. If you put your money with a broker, advisor, or somebody to manage your money, they're typically going to put you 100% invested in the market. That's kind of what they do, which is 100% risky. And people are uh, naturally risk adverse. But they think because it's somebody that, got a license and blah, 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 that they're making a decision for their best interest. Well, if you're putting, they're putting all your money in the market, keeping you 100% at risk, getting a small gain as it goes up and a big loss as it goes down, there's something wrong there. So we're seeing a lot of people want to be able to do that themselves. And this isn't rocket science. You just haven't been taught yet. And that's the big thing in these investing classes that I know you cover with your extensive background on 401ks and IRAs and how to make decisions properly in there. You've helped a lot of people get started down that path to make your own decisions, but do that with confidence in those retirement accounts because that is what everybody works so hard for, for sometimes leaving a legacy for their family even. How do you help people get started with kind of making those, those smart decisions with their retirement accounts so that way they don't get to retirement time and say, oh, honey, I wish we would have done something different. Yeah, unfortunately, we, we hear that uh, every time we have a class, there is at least one person, if not two or three or four, that say that same thing. I wish I had done something different. And the reason that people don't do something different is because they've been sold on the fact that the 401k, is it, that is the the panacea. That's what's going to get you to retirement where you can live uh, the life of Riley, so to speak. And just to add a little extra, a little extra there is the 401k wasn't originally created as a retirement plan. No, it, it wasn't. It, it was it, called a salary reduction program. Yeah, it was basically a tax uh, strategy for wealthy people to use. Mm-hmm. But once companies realized that if they set up a 401k instead of a pension plan, all of a sudden the responsibility for the amount of money in that plan and the and the performance of it was no longer theirs. It was no longer the responsibility of your employer. When they set up a 401k or 403b, then the responsibility fell on who? On you. You're responsible for what's in that plan. You're responsible for changes that you make. Uh, How are you protecting your 401k? Well, unfortunately for most people, because of what you're invested in, you can't. if, if If you have a regular investment portfolio, not that 401k type uh, of an account, but a regular investment portfolio or a self-directed IRA, there are protective measures that you can use so you don't go through these drawdowns. With a 401k or 403b, they have to sell you on that buy and hold strategy, which is if you hold on to something for you know periods of time, 15 years, 30 years, then you'll find that there's a it's going to be a pro, or the high probability that there will be a profit of some sort there. And a lot of that is the contributions that uh, people it's, are putting in. Well, there. it's not only your contributions, it's the contributions of your employer. So when you look at your statement and you see whatever the number is, remember part of that is your money that you put in and your employer's money. It's not the performance of the fund. You're lucky if you get 4 to 6% annually. Yep. 
Uh, but as Josh mentioned, you're 100% exposed to whatever the drawdown is. If we in, in 2007 to 2009, when we went through the last recession, uh, last big recession, the, the S&P 500 was down 57%. A lot of people in their portfolios, their retirement 401k, 403bs, lost 40 to 60 percent of what they had worked hard for. So what can people do differently then? Okay, well, we mentioned those income solutions, the income assets that you can use while you're still working to have extra money to put into that retirement account. When you retire, this is this is the most important thing. It's not how much you have in your retirement account. It's how much income you generate off of that retirement account. You use those same income strategies. You can use options in in your retirement accounts. You can use futures. You can use Forex if you have a self-directed IRA. If you you don't, if you just have that 401K, that's all you can rely on, uh, there is a way of setting up a hedged portfolio where you can protect those things. When you go into retirement, the number one thing to consider is protection of what you have. You cannot work 30, 40 years, get ready to retire, and maybe that year or the next year have 20 to 50 or 60 percent of what you worked so hard for taken away and still live the lifestyle that you want. So one thing I want to add there, Al, is is when I mentioned people are getting put 100 percent in the market, which is 100 percent at risk, why is it so important to take pieces of that, like say using options and, and protecting a lot of that on the side? Well, protection, again, is is the number one thing. But one of the, the problems with buying into the buy and hold strategy, which is pretty much the 401k, 403b strategy that you're encouraged to use, is that you're going to see profits be taken away from you on a regular basis. One of the things that we – well, here, let me let me kind of step back a second. The three most important components – there are three components to every trade or investment. One is the entry price. And then there's two exits. There's an exit if you're wrong, and there's an exit if you're right. Those two exits are not taken into consideration in a buy-and-hold strategy. They're not taken into consideration in the typical 401 or 403B. If if you have an investment, you don't have to watch it go down when the market goes down. It can be protected. In fact, there are strategies we will teach you, and we'll talk about it in these classes that Josh is mentioning where you can actually benefit when the market is going down. Your portfolio doesn't have to go down with the market. It can actually, you can protect it so you your loss is either minimal or not there at all, or you can actually have a, a positive return. Uh, and then for, as far as the profit is concerned, if you have a profit and you let it be taken away from you, that's basically money that's yours that somebody else is taking away. The buy and hold strategy says don't don't pay attention to that. Just wait until ten or twenty or thirty years has gone by. Then you look at the profit. Well, if you're if you're realizing a profit while you have it, that is money that is in your pocket, is in your portfolio that can help you grow more. Each one of those dollars, as I I think I mentioned last week, I like to look at it as an employee. If it's it, you have a business. Each employee has to be productive for you. Same thing with each dollar you have in your investment portfolio. You want it to be as productive as possible. That's using leverage. That's having protection. A number of things. Uh, when you go into retirement, we, we talk about options as being maybe one of the best things to learn for your retirement accounts because you can use options for protection. You can use options in an up market, a down market. You can use options to increase, uh, as I mentioned, maybe use it as a dividend replacement or to increase your dividends. A number of things you can do that you're just not being exposed to, but that's what we do. We pull back the curtain and and show you what these things are. It's really, it's just... It again, it gets down to the three three most important things. No matter what you're trading, don't complicate it. Just look at the right entry price. Look at the right exit if you're wrong, and the right exit if you're right. No matter what you're trading. Yeah, and this is you're kind of giving me to think while you're talking there, and you kind of hit it at the end there. Is is why online trading academy exists and why we've been around for so long? Is a lot of the stuff that Al is talking about may have went way over your head, and it probably did for most people. Because they, they just don't understand it. They don't teach this anywhere else. And that's why Online Trading Academy exists. We train people just like you how to get started, how to do this safely, how to do it so you have comfort, comfort doing that, knowing that you're making smart investing decisions. And that's why we break it down to simple steps. 
step-by-step strategy to guide you through that. So that way, this doesn't have to be confusing. It may sound like it because it's just a little bit different, and it's not what you've been told to do. If you look, if you talk to anybody that's in their 60s, 70s, and 80s, not many people say, if you, and the stats are, it's that says they don't have enough to retire. Well, it's because they've been doing the same thing over and over again that they're told to do. And that kind of goes back to my Brad Pitt example at the last segment. Being in that same position you are today as you are at retirement time. That's the fear that a lot of people have. Don't have that fear, but you got to do that by doing different things. Text investing to be introduced to these techniques and concepts that we're talking about. To come uh, to the one of these investing classes, text investing to the number 210, 210 right now for two, two seats for that class. Coming up next, I want to talk a little bit about the life of a trader or investor. We haven't done that for a while as far as what that might look like for you. We will be right back. <laughs> 